Hey guys, Dakar here. Welcome back to my channel. Today we're on season one, episode 21 of Grim. We're getting super close to that finale now. So let's roll that intro and get stuck into it. Here we go. He stripped off his skin and tossed it into the fire and he was in human form again. It's 918, maybe 42 degrees. And we're on the trail of a genuine hominid. I feel out of breath just listening to him. Dave, you can do this. You can do this, Dave. <laughs> oh, the Blair Witch vibes that I'm getting is uh, triggering me a bit. Oh. Something spooked the horses. Get out of there! What did he just shoot? He didn't just shoot his own horse, right? I've got a horse that's been attacked. Oh, wow. I didn't see anything. Am I blind? Well, that really claw. Marks really deep, too. Wide jaw, teeth spread apart. He definitely hit something. Traps lead off that way. We better check it out. Uh, or not, Julia. Maybe you could give Nick a call. Aren't you just messing with the scenes of the crime here? I don't see him anymore. Went in this direction. Up high in the trees. Is he in a tree? There's a shoe right there. What? <gasps> With the oh, foot still inside. What in the hell? Is that Dave? I can't wait to find out more history regarding the key. No, stay there. Don't touch anything. Mama away. Yeah, don't touch anything else because you've already been touching things. Answer is obvious. These murders were committed by a barefoot man carrying a wolf. Whoa. Oh, the girl survived it? No, I don't get me. Is this going to be like another no, ogre situation, me. maybe? Or an actual Bigfoot? Witness said that they were attacked by Bigfoot. Boy. That was definitely a hairy foot, though. Hairy feet. Anyone going to comment on the hairy legs and feet? <laughs> Who is it? Larry? Larry? Who's that? Have we seen a Larry before? Oh, Larry. You don't seem to be retracting. Oh, this could be a problem. And more of a problem is he's, he's hurt people. Well, it looks as though he's hurt people. I may have Bigfoot on my couch. I'll be there as soon as I can. <laughs> okay, I'll see you in a minute. Wondering if you could maybe sneak me in so I could take a look myself. Oh, is it like top secret? No, it's not top secret, more like middle secret. She's doing this solo. She's not told Nick about this hair. Wasn't she shouting at Nick for doing the exact thing that she's now doing? I don't want crosses burned on my front yard. Just saying, this is how legends wind up killing innocent people. Are you baiting yourself? <gasps> oh my god, Monroe, please. Jesus, hang to run. <laughs> Scared them right off. Oh my god! Oh my god! <laughs> the show scared the bleeding crap out of me. Get it out! He's got something stuck in him. <laughs> Now's that? He's not breathing. I think he's dead. Poor Monroe. He's lost his friend as well. I'm coming back to the precinct. He's spooked. He is spooked. Look, if you say he killed people, 
Okay, I'm not second guessing, but I just can't believe he'd do it. This will be something to do with that therapist that you saw. I bet the therapist has put something in him. Maybe it had something to do with this thing he pulled out of his neck. Oh, is that how big it was? I just saw a bit of string. I didn't think it had a big chunky thing on the end of it. Who shall I have to make it at you? Uh, Larry McKenzie. Are you a friend? No. I'm investigating a homicide. I understand Mr. McKenzie was a patient. Well, he knows something because that face is saying a lot. I would love to talk to you about your identity issues sometime. Thanks. I'm good. I mean, he didn't ask, but... Is Juliet going to just figure this out on her own? And then Nick's going to have to come clean with the whole Vesson world? Oh. It got me again. And Hank's... Hank's seen things as well. Wallace? Oh my god. I don't know really what I saw. It attacked my friend Wallace. And then it came at me. Check the back of his neck. There's something on his neck. There we go. It looks like the same thing McKenzie had. Oh, the way that you can see the whole thing under his skin. Larry walks in. No one's seen him in weeks. He sits down with this big smile on his face. And he says, I'm cured. That's what this therapist is promising them. A cure. This is the subcutaneous drug delivery pump. We extracted it from Mr. Epicroft's neck. What kind of drugs was it pumping? Uh, trace amounts of steroids, a mixture of homeopathic herbs and spices. Herbs and spices. Rosalie, I need a favor. <laughs> we don't even really know what happened. The neighbor said they heard a horrible sound coming from his apartment. By the time they got there, Dan had climbed out the window and fell to his death. Jesus. Therapist needs to stop him. We know who ordered them. A psychiatrist here in Portland, Dr. Constantine Brinkerhoff. Oh, what a surprise. How many did he order? Four. You've been counting for three? So far. I think you better find out what that fourth one is. In his brother's neck. He went like this, didn't he? Oh, it's in his neck? Dr. Brinkerhoff. You have to help me. Okay. Monroe better be safe here. I swear to God. What? Freaker Hoffman using the drugs on himself. He's out for blood. He's on the street. Imagine seeing that. So no from me, guys. Behind you. He's not. Oh, there we go. Oh, Hank's just seen this. Hank has just seen this. Your mind would explode at seeing that. Did you see it? <gasps> Nick's going to say that he's crazy. Nick. I'm telling you, it was different. It just changed. Just right there, did you? Hank. Did you see? Oh, I don't like this. I don't like it. They're going to send him crazy. Because after that, all that stuff with Adeline as well. I don't like that. That makes me really uncomfy. The DNA wasn't human, but it also couldn't be matched to any other known species. So, I don't know. Sometimes tests are wrong. Oh, and now he's doing it to Julia. What if all of the stories we've heard, what if they're not stories? You see how she's finding stuff out and then she's telling you about it, Nick? You could have potentially done that with Juliet when you found out. Oof. That was a lot. It was a, it was a, a big episode, that. Not so much in regards to, like, the Vessin and the Monster of the Week type of thing, but kind of in a way because it's what's triggered Hank, Juliet, and others to open their eyes a little bit more and you know try and broaden their minds and think maybe there's some truth to these fairy tales that we've been told throughout our lives and that it's not 
all fictional and what's really made me uncomfy is you know picturing how Nick feels right now and what he should do because you could see the hesitation on his face when it came to Hank he was like feared but you could also see like um a this could be a game changer for me if I if I go along with this or you know just put the barriers up and be like I didn't see anything and you're crazy type of thing and he went for the latter which made me sad especially like I say because Hank's already been through all of that confusion with Adeline and the mind games and he sees so much and then they just sort of brush everything off and he's he's gonna think that he's crazy he will and I don't like that thought because he isn't he is he is being played with and messed with and yeah, I don't like it. And with Juliet, it was a case of she's gone about this thing, found out, like discovered facts, uh, scientific facts, and then expressed her thoughts to Nick. And he's sort of done the same, like, I don't know what you're about. Like, you sound a bit crazy. Um, I mean, he didn't do that, but that's like the expression that he sort of had on his face. He could take this moment now. I doubt he will, but he could potentially take that moment to be like, I've been keeping a secret from you, okay? Um, but as well, it's just like she found something out that was weird. There's a few events that's happened that have like piqued her interest. And then she's took the guts to say, Nick, I know I'm going to sound crazy right now, but what do you think about this? And it, again, it's like two sides. Like this is exactly what Nick could have done when Aunt Marie said, you are a grim, you know? He could have been like, you're going to think I'm crazy, Juliet but this thing has happened. And if you think I'm crazy, like I'm sorry for that, but I'm just passing on information. And then slowly it would have been proven, like organically proven when like the ogre comes barging into their home and like knocking them about the house. But yeah, things are getting heated. Things are getting really good. Uh, Renard, again, not much in terms of Renard and his uh, secret, but we still saw him in this and he plays the role so well as this like strong powerful uh leader of of this precinct i don't know it just intrigues me more because i know he's even more than that and i i want to find more info out and maybe in the finale we'll get that so we've got one episode left that i'm aware of this seems to be building towards like the reveal of what nick actually is or juliet and hank find something out i i, I don't know but I'm very, very hyped to find out what, what happens in that finale and how it sets up season two as well. This episode was really interesting. I liked how they played with the, was it Vogel? Like, I can't remember what he said now, but the, the transformation between human and Vessen and how the control of that is so important and a lot of Vessen's struggle with maintaining their human form and not giving in to their animal instincts and i just find that all really fascinating and him saying like vessin have struggles too you know they need therapists they need this extra help and it's even more complex than what humans go through i felt for monroe here because he, he lost a lot of friends he's tr trying his best to help but yeah it's hard it's hard he's had it rough he always seems to have it rough i would have thought rosalie would have been in this one i'm a little bit disappointed just because it was the herbs and spices deal that i thought well great rosalie can you know run some tests and say oh well this mix with this and do this and uh, you know get her more involved i miss rosalie i want to see more of her i'm hyped for it guys i'm really enjoying this now really enjoying this show and i want to apologize for it being a bit of a, a slow one for me uh, I, I wasn't like hooked in straight away, but I'm in guys, I'm in. And I can't wait for season two. But yeah, let's see what happens in this finale and go from there. I want to thank you all for watching my content. It really does mean the world. Check out the links in my description if you want to see more from me. And yeah, I'll see you for the next one. Thank you so much. Bye guys. And now it's time to take a comment from the Jack Pack. And today I've actually chose two. So this is from my 119 reaction over on patreon and dexter says hello there dakara great to know that you're getting into grim it only gets better also i don't know if you noticed but the reaper that talked the most 
is the same reaper that tried to reap Bobby in Supernatural. Thought you'd get a kick out of that. And to that I say, I cannot believe I didn't even notice. I'm usually good with faces. Obviously, you know I'm not good with names. But yeah, I, d I genuinely didn't even twig. So thank you for that little tidbit there. I really appreciate it. And McCarver says, so a reaper is just a job, not a type of vessel. And this I found really interesting because in my head, I just always assumed it was, well, not going to be a vessel, but some sort of um, supernatural being, you know? And like McCarver says, a reaper is just a job and it's not a vessel, which makes me think that anyone potentially could be a reaper. It doesn't have to be a vessel. A reaper is the role that they play. And I just found that really interesting. I need to bear that in mind when I'm continuing to watch this show as well, because from past things I've seen, when you hear reaper, you think that that is everything that they are but it's, it's not. It can be so much more than that. So yeah, thank you so much for leaving your comments, guys, and for watching my videos. It means the world to me, and I hope you continue to enjoy my content and leave a bunch more comments so I can read them. Thank you so much, guys. See you for the next one.